Welcome to game day here at Heavy Cardboard, solo game day as it were, here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all tonight. It's been a day. It's been a rough one today, so I appreciate you guys joining me. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun one, going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. So today, we are bringing, and by we, I mean... I am bringing y'all Rurik, Dawn of Kiev, uh, designed by Stanislav Kordinsky, I think is how you pronounce it. So a little, little uh, grace on that and published by Peacekeeper Games. Now, Peacekeeper did send us this review copy of the game uh, some number of months ago before the world ended. As far as the world ending, as far as... Uh, uh, COVID happening, and so we had planned on doing a multiplayer uh, playthrough of this, but, well, life happens. Now, this isn't sponsored. I would say that the world or the universe just kind of looking out, I guess, kind of for me and for Peacekeeper in a sense that I didn't realize they were running a Kickstarter for the expansion right now. So this is pure coincidence, so lucky for them and uh, lucky for y'all. I suppose. So welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday. I think it is. Uh, it's Labor Day weekend here in the States and I hope everyone is able to enjoy Labor Day weekend holiday as best you can given the, uh, the current world situation. But that said, we are here to play a game tonight. So Let's do that tonight, shall we? If you guys enjoy it, like, subscribe, support the show over on PledgeHC.com if you were so inclined to do so. Now, full disclosure, I've yet to play a full playthrough of this game, so we're going to be getting through this slowly uh, to be able to go uh, to start with, and then we will pick up the pace as we go along. So I hope you guys are having a good night tonight. I could use the company. It's been a rough day. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's... Fire up Ki or uh, Rurik Dawn of Kiev. All right. So, obviously, slow, solo playthrough, as it were. And I did it again, didn't I? I left my glasses. You see what I mean by it being a day? Give me a second. Be right back. You don't know how much you appreciate glasses until you need them and can't find them, right? <laughs> so Rurik, Donna Kiev. Kiev Ruse was a medieval empire to which many Eastern Europeans trace their roots. The Rurik dynasty ruled Kievan Ruse from the 9th century until the 13th century when the empire fractured permanently, primarily due to the invasion of the Mongols. At the end of the 10th century, Vladimir the Great united Kievan Ruse and solidified its borders. When he died in 1015, he had a large number of sons who were set up as governors of their own cities, many of whom wanted to claim the title of Grand Prince of Kiev. Warfare broke out between his sons and an intense power struggle continued for decades. So there you go. That's the theme for today's game, as it were. Now, there's a lot of, I, I, I do not speak Russian. Um, 
So I will do my best. I, I beg your grace for the butchering of a number of names, whether it's locations or heroes in this game. So let me just preface that. So, okay. Now that we're done prefacing, let's get into it, shall we? All right. All right. So what is it you guys are looking at here? Well, the solo game is set up mostly like the two-player game. Now, it does vary from the multiplayer game, and I am not at all going to touch on the multiplayer game. What I'm going to talk about is strictly for the solo game here, okay? So, we have Kiev and Ruse here. It's divvied up into a number of different uh, sectors or areas of the map. Now, in the solo game, only the green areas that you see here are going to be in play. So, here we go. Let's go and try and butcher these to start with. Uh, Novgorod, Rostov, Smolensk, Polsk, Voln, Volin, Volin, we'll go with Volin, Kiev, Pereyaslav, Pereyaslavl, and Chernigov. There we go. So those are the only areas that are in play. So it's going to be these eight areas in play there. Now, Within these eight areas, we have a neutral player, so a player color that is not in the game. So all these blue armies that you see on the board, these five, these are not for myself, plain yellow, or the, uh, the Automa or the Rebels, which are plain white, and the Rebel pieces are actually in black, as you can see them out here. Now, the Automa is represented by Zvetbok. That's their leader right here, all right? And they have 15 rebel forces. Those are the bad guy forces. My guys are the yellow ones as we go along throughout the game, all right? So that's kind of here on the main board. Now we have the round track as well. The game takes place over four rounds. We have additional advisors that we're going to be able to acquire as we advance throughout the game. And then over here we have the Automa deck, okay? Uh, there, the bot deck, however you want to word this, this Automa deck is going to be the one that is going to be driving the force of the Automa player. So I will go over that as we get into play as we go along. We have a strategy board over here, which is going to be exactly what it sounds like. We are going to be putting our advisors out here and strategizing what it is we're going to be doing in a given round up against the rebel, uh, the rebel uh, player as well, and they will be placing uh, their advisors out here on the strategy board as well. Then we have the claim board over here. This is going to be one of the main ways we're going to get victory points, and there are three different things in which we can advance up those tracks, whether it's to rule regions or build uh, buildings in various regions or have things on our player board, a certain number of things on our boats, as well as the warfare track, we're going to be getting victory points from those. Then down below, we have deed cards. There is a market, an open market here, uh, of multiple deed cards set up, as well as the deed deck. Then we have the player boards, or what's called the household mats. I'll probably just say player boards as we go along. When it is in the horizontal shape like this, this is the Automa's uh, player board setup. When it is vertical, that is the regular players board, all right? In addition to that, we have the different types of buildings that we're going to be able to build. We have our advisors and we have our armies as well, all right? Then we have our scheme cards, which those are split up into two different decks. And then there will be agenda cards that we are going to be uh, dealing out as part of the setup. Now, there are also resources over here as well as money off board, and there are leaders, all right, or, or heroes, however you want to put that. So our leader, we don't have one yet because I figure I'd let you guys determine what leader we're going to go with, all right? But the Automa, the uh, leader of the rebels, if you will, is Zviatpok. Zviatpok. Ah, I don't know how, I, I, it's the best I got. I'm trying, 
All right, I'm trying. So that is their leader. And I will uh, zoom in on the minis and everything as uh, probably at the end of the stream. But as it is, that's pretty much everything that you guys are looking at. Now, I am not going to teach this game on the front end entirely. The reason being, because honestly, it just feels weird. Whenever I do solo playthroughs, I always do this as we go along. So I'm going to continue doing that here. But I will give you guys an overview of what it is we're going to be doing in the game and the goals of our game, and then we will walk through everything, uh, the details of it, as it comes up in the game. So the game takes place over four rounds, as I mentioned earlier. After the fourth round, we go into scoring, which is going to be anywhere you see these wax seals out here. We're going to score those. Whoever has the most points wins. Pretty simple on that, all right? And they become the next ruler of Kievan Ruse. Now, each round only has three phases. There's a strategy phase, put our advisors out here to be able to uh, uh, take actions to set up. Think of this, if you're familiar with something like a dominant species, this is the placing your pawns out here to take the actions. Then there is the action phase, which is go ahead and do our actions. And then a claim phase, hey, did we get any of these things? There's a little bit more to it than that, but did we get any of those things? Okay, and get ready for the next round. We do that over the course of four rounds, and whoever does it best, whether it's us or the Automa, wins the game. Now, the only other couple things that I want to mention before we get started and finish setup and everything is, first off, you'll notice there's a couple of dots over here on the Automa or the Rebel uh, player board. These range from one to four. One is easy, four is, <laughs> uh, I chose two. I, I felt two out of four. I would have chosen two and a half if given the option. I wasn't, so therefore, we're going with the two level, okay? I feel like that was, uh, that makes sense, okay? All right? All right, so, without further ado, the only other thing that I want to bring up before we start is how involved in the theme do you guys want to be today? The reason I'm asking that is each of the potential leaders here has a bit of a backstory as well as what their special abilities are. Now, we could randomly choose one of the seven that are left here, or I can go over the backstory and their special abilities, or I could just be like, hey, which many y'all like best? And do it that way. So we have options. So you guys tell me, how do you want to choose our leader? Honestly, I figure a lot of you guys are just going to want to do something like, you know, that. So how about we do that? So I will give the names, though. I, I will give that at least, okay? And I will, I will talk about each of them. Uh, so we'll start off with Agatha. Agatha is the one with the bird right there. Um, you know what? I lied. There isn't a ton of backstory on each of them. It's just their special ability. So, there's Agatha. All right. Uh, the next one we will talk about is the dude with the giant shield, which I believe is this one. That is Boris. Okay. Uh, next, we have Maria, which it has the bow over here. All right. I mean... Okay, I was gonna get there, but yeah, the one with the Russian wolfhound, because that's close to a greyhound. By the way, I bought a dog bed yesterday. I don't have a dog yet. I will on Wednesday. Well, Wednesday is the home visit to be able to get my, uh, to get my, uh, the home inspection for, for everything. So, all right. So the one with the wolfhound is, uh, oh boy, Mr. Slav, is that how you pronounce it? All right. Okay, Mr. the Slav it is, right here, okay? I mean, seriously, right? All right, done, easy enough. Let me get that out of the way. Let me grab our card. All 
Oh, by the way, I will say this. Leica also has her own card. Okay. Sight hounds hunt by sight and speed rather than by scent. Various breeds, such as the Borzoi, uh, were used in Eastern Europe during the early 11th century. Note, this card is not used during play. Thanks to Dave, uh, uh, Dave Save, I think, for suggesting the dog's name. Leica. There we go. So, Leica and Mstislav. Okay, so in Mstislav's region, it only costs you one tax point to tax or one build point to build, regardless of what the rules of that region are. All right, there we go. I mean, greyhounds are sighthounds, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> like that was ever a question. I realize that. All right. All right. So let's go ahead. I, I, I love that the, the dog has their own card, even though there's no gameplay. So we're just going to. Priorities. There we go. All right. Dog man, missed the Slav. He was always, uh, always uh, he was away fighting the uh, Khazars at the outset of the war and returned to find all his siblings fighting. Really? That's awesome. All right. Sorry, Franny, you got overruled. All right. Leica pretty much translates to woofer. <laughs> and John says, uh, Mr. Slav, I, am, I, am I even close on pronouncing that right, by the way? Uh, actually did pretty well in the real history. Ended up splitting rule of Kievan Ruse with his brother Yaroslav for a while. All right. You know, that's cool. So, boom. There we go. Now, obviously, these would normally stand up like this, but I figure since it's top-down camera, yada, yada, yada. All right, so we need to finish setup. So let me go ahead. I have a little player aid here. So let me go ahead and f make sure I have the setup all done. So let's see. We have the Rebellion. Good. 15 Rebel miniatures. By the way, mine are all organized nice and neat, and I figure the Rebels, they're just kind of because they're Rebels, right? Okay, cool. Uh, Zviat Bulk, uh, always their leader. So done, and they have their card. Excellent. Shuffle the Rebellion cards. Take my word for it that I did. Uh, by the way, these are referred to as Rebellion cards. That's the Automa deck. You have to put two and two together on that. So I hope they fix that in the rule book for the uh, expansion coming out and everything. Choose a difficulty level. We've done that. That's difficulty level two. The first player marker above the player mat, and actually now would be a good time to show you guys this. So a moment here, and I will, there we go. All right, so on their player mat, they have the little ax right there. That is their, uh, their starting um, priority. So in other words, when we talk about their priority or which a set of Automa rules they are going to follow. It's wherever the bear is, the first player marker. The first player marker obviously isn't used in the solo game, but wherever it is here, that's the one they're going to follow. Now, each of these different boards, based on the difficulty, they have different stuff on it and different priorities and everything. So just keep that in mind as well, all right? All right, so they have three coins to go ahead and start, as well as all of these covered up. So that's good. We don't place a rebel in each region and play, which we normally would do so. So you'll notice that there are various rebels out here. Instead, you place Sviatopolk and two rebels in Kiev. So Kiev and uh, Novgorod are the two kind of key areas in this game. And there's a lot of things that revolve around those, so keep that in mind. But we start with two rebels and, uh, sorry, and Zviat the Bulk. Again, am I even close on that one either? Okay, all right. Anyway, um, and then you place two rebels in each of the first two non-Kiev regions listed on the top, top card of the uh, the Rebellion deck or the Automa deck. Okay, so now let's go ahead and 
talk a little bit about the Automa deck here, okay? All right, so looking at the Automa deck, it's basically broken up into three different things here. At the very top, all of these have a different location order. Take my word for it, they do. And so whenever so we have to do something for the Automa and it says to follow location order, we are going to follow in the order of the card in which we're actually doing. So, okay, so we are supposed to put two, well, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Then there is a build order that is tied to the different priorities. And remember, the priority that's set right now is over here on the far right. So we're going to be following that priority for the bottom card. More on that in a little bit. But the build order of things right there, and then for their advisors to place them out on the board. Now, what we are not going to do, however, is use the top card for anything other than the setup. So as you can see here, it's uh, Polotsk and uh, Volin are the two areas that are listed first on there. So if we look, Volin or Volin and Polotsk, those are the two areas that have the rebels in it. So that's how we determined that, okay? All right, then select an unused uh, troop color, place one of each in every region that isn't in those three regions. So, okay, those five, done. And then I cannot place my troops or leader in the three regions that the rebels occupy. So I can't place here, here, or here. But I do need to be able to start to place mine. All right. Yes, Cooper lives with Jess. Okay. So now let me go back here in clockwise order. Now, again, this is for multiplayer, but as it is, it's just me. All right. All right. In clockwise order, beginning with the first play, each player chooses, chooses one of their minis in a region of their choice. This continues until they place three troops on the board. So I get to place three troops, and I can do it in any region, any mix and match, except because of solo rules, those three regions. All right. And then I get to place my leader anywhere that has one of my troops. So, okay. Uh, you know what? I would say that we go ahead and place, so we have three, we'll go and place one here in Novigrad, not Novigrad, it's uh, Novigrad, there you go. Um, we will place one in Smolensk, that's two, and we will place a third Uh, so the, what I'm debating, because my leader it counts as an a, uh, army as well, so when we talk about ruling, ruling is you have more than any one other player. So right now, one to one, one to one, so neither of us rules there, but if I were to do something like this and something like this, it would be two to one and I would rule both those areas. The only other place I'm thinking about is leaving... Uh, taking one of these and putting it up in the Rostov. But you know what? I feel pretty good about that. So there we go. Done. I think that's where we're going to put it as such. Okay. So that is all of setup, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, that's it for setup. Okay. Now, I am always the first player in a given round. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and talk about each other or the, the phase that we're about to go into, I think would be a better way to do this, okay? All right, so the strategy phase. All right, so now what we are talking about are our advisors. You'll notice that I have advisors one, two, four, and five, as does the rebels over here. Now, that means we're going to have four Advisors, we're going to be able to take four various actions over here on the strategy board. We will gain the number two and number three at, later on in subsequent rounds. But we're going to go ahead and place them out here on the strategy board. Now, there are two things that you need to know about advisors. There's a thing called power and there's a thing called initiative. Okay, Power has to do with the strategy phase. So basically, the higher the number the higher number goes to the top. So for instance, if I were to place, say, this, 
there in the muster action, right? And then later on, the bot comes over and says they want to place uh, that, no that over there on the muster. Well, whoever has the higher number goes on top and gets the better thing, but they're going to activate later. More on that in a little bit. So when they would say they want to place here, they're going to bump everything down lower and then place it like so. But you can also bribe. So let's say that the bot had done that, and then I say, you know what, I want to place this too, but I want to place higher on, the, uh, on that to be able to take the better action. Well, in that case, I can bribe, meaning I can put any amount of money that is a greater number than what that number is. So in other words, this is two plus three cash makes five. That means that would go down I would put these three there with them, like so, and there you go. So for all intents and purposes, that's a five during the strategy phase. The strategy phase is just placing our advisors out here on the board, alternating, boom, 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 placing them up there on the board. Hopefully that makes sense. By the way, there is one more thing for setup. I'll get into that in a bit. Then when we get into the next phase, which is the action phase, then what's going to happen is we are going to resolve these lowest number first. So I have the number one, wherever the number one is, let's say it's say there, I will resolve my number one, then the bot would resolve its number one, etc., etc. okay? Does that make sense? I hope, okay? And then when you resolve them, you pull them off the board, so on and so forth, okay. Now, You'll notice that eventually we're going to have a number two and a number two. Then we get our choice. The bot will always activate theirs left or right when it comes to them. So just because I get the better action, I'm going to initiate it later though in turn order. It's a really, really clever mechanism that, that I think works really well here. Okay? All right. Cool. All right. Oh, I guess one thing, one other thing I should uh, point out is this, even though it was a five for power for placing, it's still only a two as far as initiative order. So I will resolve this. This would be a better example. I will resolve this. Then I will resolve that. When I resolve that, the money that I bribe will go back into the supply. Then I will resolve that. Even though this has a power of five, it has an initiative of two. I hope that makes sense. Okay. And if not, you guys will see it in, uh, in, um, in actual acting momentarily. There, there, and there. All right, the last thing that I will go over before we actually go into this phase is I'm gonna go over what the actual six actions are. Now, they're all really, really simple, I think. Uh, on, the, uh, uh, on their surface. So the muster action lets you recruit people, okay? So more, more, uh, more armies. Wow, I told you, it's been a rough day. Words have not been easy for me, okay? All right, so if you take a look here, you'll notice on the muster there are three helmets, two helmets, and then a coin and a one helmet, right? Well, the three helmets is, that's how many uh, muster points you have to muster one troop from your supply and put it into a region where you have one or more troops. Okay, easy enough, pretty simple. So for free, that would allow me to put out three troops where I already have troops and troops being here from the supply. Okay, easy enough. Um, and if for whatever reason your leader gets removed, that's a troop, you can recruit them, same rules like always. If, however, there is a coin associated with it, okay? If there is, you have to pay to be able to do so. Now you can always forfeit an action. Ah, I don't wanna recruit, or I can't afford to pay it, or I don't wanna do whatever one of, where one of my advisors is. You can always just take your advisor back and you get a coin for doing so when you do so. So, okay, cool, easy enough. All right, moving on from muster. Move, pretty simple. Three movement, two movement, one movement. Okay, that's how many movement points. That allows you to move one troop 
one space adjacent. So moving from here to there, pretty simple. I cannot teleport. The game cheats, i.e. the rebels can teleport, I cannot, okay? And you can split it up moving however you want, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I don't need to belabor that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about attacking. You get attack points equal to the number of sword icons. Pretty simple. Hold on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hold on. Let me grab some tea. Oh, more Gen Micha. It's delicious. All right. Okay. You choose whether you're going to attack rebels or an opponent. How, that's in a multiplayer. However, here, you're either going to attack the neutrals or the rebels. Now, in the multiplayer, whenever you defeat a rebel, what's going to happen is you're going to look at the bottom. Now, these have stickers on the bottom that I've placed. This is only for the multiplayer game, okay? In the solo game here, you don't get whatever's on the bottom of the sticker there, so ignore that, okay? All right. So, when you remove it, you place it next to your household mat, okay? And then, in theory, you would gain a coin or, or, or good uh, based on what's on the bottom of it. But in this case, you don't, okay? All right. Hey, Christopher, long time no see. All right. And then, so, opponent neutral player, I think is a better way to talk about this for the solo game, all right? So, when you attack the rebels, as if you would attack an opponent, okay? Because that opponent removes one of their troops from the region. So, for instance, if it were something along the lines of like that, okay? And if I have an advisor here, two attacks. Get to remove both of those units from the board. Okay, pretty simple. Then advance your warfare marker up one space on the warfare track. Then you check for casualties. So there's the warfare track. You'll notice that's going to be for scoring here. Pretty simple. It starts off the board, but hey, for every attack, you move up the warfare track. Okay, one step. So two attacks, you do these um, individually. So it'd be one attack, move up. Two attack, remove that and move up. Pretty simple, okay? All right. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes sense as far as how attacks work, okay? When you, you or the rebel, rebellion, though, attack a neutral troop, you remove the troop from the region and return it to the box. Basically, they're just a nuisance, okay? However, hmm, the rebellion, will, if they were in an area that had me and a neutral troop, they'll always come after me first because that's the way they roll. Okay? All right. Let's move on. And you know what? In hindsight, I will go ahead and put that there in Rostov instead, I think. Yeah, I feel better about that. All right. So then you have to check for casualties. Okay? So to check for a casualty, you reveal a number of cards from a single scheme deck. There are two scheme decks, and I will show you this when it actually happens, okay? If you reveal, uh, according to, uh, according to, it's one by default, it's an extra, depending on if your opponent ruled the region when you attack, and another extra if your opponent has built a stronghold in the region. So, I talked about ruling. I rule... Novgorod, Novgorod, because I have two strength versus the is one strength. Nobody rules here, nobody rules there, okay? So if I were to attack here, they rule, if I attack with, say, one, they rule. So I would take, draw one card by default and then an extra card because they rule when I attack. And then we're talking about uh, strongholds and building those. We'll talk about that when we get to the building phase. Okay, good, easy enough. Okay, so we're going to draw from one of the two decks. There you go. If there are casualties, you lose troops. Back to the supply. Okay. All right, 
Any questions on that? No? Good. All right, let's skip over to the scheme deck now. The scheme deck, you're going to go ahead and draw that many cards and keep one from one of the decks. They're going to be some sort of little benefit for us. More on that later. Okay, easy enough. The tax action. The tax action, you spend a number of tax points equal to the number of cart icons, and they allow you to collect goods. Okay? So, you'll notice that there are various goods out here on the board. Okay, there's fish, there's wood, there is honey, there is fur, and I think that's it. Yes. All right? One tax point, if you rule in a region, for instance, up here, it costs one tax point to take the good. If I don't rule, it takes two points to collect a good. And then you put it either on your dock or on your boat over here in one of the matching locations. Okay. All right. You can always freely move things between your dock and your boat. More on that later. And the last thing is building. You guessed it. It has to do with building the buildings, okay? There are three different types. And then the number of build points that it costs depends on if you rule, it's one build point. If you don't rule, it's two build points. However, Mr. Slav says in uh, Mr. Slav's region, it only costs one tax point to tax one build, uh, uh, to tax or to build. So that stuff that I mentioned for both of those, it costs two points if I don't rule. Not true, wherever Mr. Slav is. Okay? Cool. Good. So those are the available actions. However, there are also bonus actions. All right? There are three different types of bonus uh, actions. One, playing a scheme card. So those cards that you're going to get, going to be able to draw or play one per turn. Okay, cool. Or you can accomplish deeds. Deeds are going to be these cards over here. You can only accomplish one from your uh, uh, one at a time, and you cannot accomplish anything that is open here. So in other words, I will have had to have taken it into my hand first. I think that makes sense. Or you can convert goods, and I will zoom in on that and show you guys that as well. When you use these, you just flip them over, and then they will reset at the beginning of the next round. All right, that's it for the strategy in action phase. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and do this, okay? So as I mentioned, I suppose I had to bring up my camera and chat and stuff. How is everybody today? You know, it's funny, one of the things that I've been told is maybe I should loosen things up and not uh, be so serious on the streams and stuff. Yeah, I'll bring camera up and chat up here. I was debating whether or not to do that. Um, you know what? I'm not going to bring chat. I forget. I'm not using a background for that anymore. So instead, we will just put this up here and see if it fits. So hi, y'all. So that's what we're trying to do tonight. Trying to make it a little bit more informal, a little bit more easygoing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I start, okay? So what do we want to do? I think getting people out on the board would be good. Attacking would be good. Uh, I'm less concerned with moving right now. Uh, taxing and building. Building is nice. You know what? There is one other thing that I probably ought to explain to you guys before we do this. And that is, why do we want to build the various things, right? So let me go over what the three, uh, three buildings do. A moment. Okay. Okay. So we have the stronghold. We have the church, and we have the market, okay? So we'll do them in that order. The stronghold counts as one of your troops as far as determining who rules. So it's a plus one, okay? However, when an, and I should say, when an opponent attacks you in the region, they must reveal one extra scheme card to check for a casualty. So it's just awesome. It's not strongholds. Yes, you are peace limited. All right, the churches here, are whenever you build a church, the moment you build a church, this is important, all right? You remove an opponent's non-leader troop from that region. Then you place one of your non-leader troops in the region, okay? You can remove a troop, but if you don't remove a troop, you can't place a troop. I hope that's uh, clear and important. 
okay? All right. And then last is a market. Whenever you collect a good by taxing in a region with your market, you get an extra of that good or a coin up to you. Okay? Cool. All right. So now that you guys understand what the, uh, what the buildings do, all right? All right. Okay. So I think getting more troops out there is going to be important. And we don't, and here's the other thing that's really important to note. We're going to use the bottom card. So you can see that it's pulled out just a little bit, but we don't know what actions they are going to take. And you know what? Because I'm paranoid that you guys think I cheat, which I know you don't, but I'm still forever paranoid about that. So I said this was going to be the top card, right? Because we used it for setup. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to shuffle these. Hey, Robo, uh, Robohoga, first time, made it to a live stream. Oh, apparently it's Father's Day in, uh, down under in Australia and Kiwiville, i.e. New Zealand. All right, well, happy Father's Day to everybody down there. If Luke shows up, I assume that Robohoga also is from down there. So I would say those are sufficiently shuffled. So now what I'm going to do, because I don't want to see what the existing top card is, I'm going to put the one that we know there, flip it over, and then I'm going to pull the bottom one out, like so. There we go. So now you know it's completely on the up and up. Okay. All right. So, as I said, I want to muster. But the question is, oh, shoot, I forgot. We have to do uh, the end game goals. You guys let me forget. How many of these? I believe it's two... Yep, two to every player. Each player selects one of the cards to keep, returns the other to the box. However, I don't believe that the Automa gets one, because how would it know? Yeah, it doesn't say, so I'm going to assume it's just us. So we will go with that one, and we will go with that one. So let's see what they are, shall we? The others are out of the game. These are just cool endgame goals, bonus points for us. All right. So, what do we get? We got Esteem. Now, some of these have been removed from the deck because they don't work in a solo game. So, we have Esteemed and we have Prosperous. So, finish in first place on the trade track, okay, or occupy the most regions with your troops. Not going to lie, I feel, like, uh, I feel like the Esteemed is going to be considerably harder because uh, they're going to be putting out troops like a, like a madman, I think. All right. Oh, hey. All right. Peacekeeper's here. Hi. I know it's super late for you guys, so I appreciate you guys hanging out tonight. Who is it, by the way, that's running the account tonight? Um, so I'm leaning towards Prosperous here. I think that's the direction we go, because going up, leading on the trade track, we can just focus on doing that. So I think that's what we're going to do. I think Esteemed is going to be really hard, so we're going to discard that one out of the game. And we will keep this, and it will just hang out over here, there. All right. So, uh, I keep saying we're going to actually get started, but I keep remembering there are a couple other things I want to point out. Probably ought to show you guys that board, eh? Hi, Kirk. All right, good deal. So, the three ones, so, rule the regions at now. If you ever rule, say, four regions, you move up. However, if you ever lose, like now you only rule three regions, you don't go down. It is a one-way trip up the track. You will never come back down. So it's only at the moment you qualify, boom, I got it, we're good. Okay, cool. Building is exactly what it says for adjacent regions. And trading, goods on a boat. Well, I guess we're going to be focusing on that now, y'all. So put them on your boat. In other words, don't spend them. Okay. Oh, one other thing I suppose you guys want to see. The deed cards that are available. There you go. So, have six troops in one region. And then you will get a movement if you qualify. These are the deed cards that you can, you can play one per turn, right? Uh, and it's worth a point. Establish a fortress. Spend two wood uh, in one region. 
Um, you know what? I'm going to have to look that card up. Hold on. What card number is it? It's Establish a Fortress is what it is. Uh, spend two wood and have a stronghold and a church in the same region. And if you do, draw two scheme cards. Keep one. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. That makes sense. And the last one is Horde, and that's worth a point. And Hoarding, I'm looking for the iconography a moment. There it is. Spend three goods of the same type. Draw two scheme cards. Keep one. Probably not a card that's going to work for us, considering we want to move up the goods on a boat track. So, now, for real, we are starting. Over under glory to Rome's. We're going to go two for that today. Two and a half. Nah, I'm lying. Three and a half. Three and a half glory to Rome's. And who are you, uh, who are you, or what team are you on? Are you on team Mr. Slav? Or are you on the, uh, I mean, with the Borzoi? Or Zviatopolk? Boo, yes, boo. Okay. Just saying. Oh, and you know what? I came prepared today. Granted, you know, we're only four hours late to get started, but. Not easy to find royalty-free Russian folk music. You would think it'd be easier than it was. Nostalgic whistling, 17, meaning there were 16 other nostalgic whistling tracks. Just saying, they're not all whistling. I wouldn't do that to you or to me. Just throwing that out there, okay? Gusarino, all right, have a good night. Team Hound, that's what I'm talking about. Michael, you don't get a cheers, Michael. By the way, how's the volume level? I think it's probably good, but I want to. That's dark, Eric. All right, here we go. So I want to muster for sure. Um, I also want goods because I want to be able to move up the track, right? Um, and I want, which means taxing is going to be important. But I think mustering is going to be important, so I'm going to go ahead and put my four up there. You always put it on the highest track, and then if you get bumped down, you get bumped down. Okay? Okay. All right, so now, now we need to slide the bottom card out. Ah, wrong one. Jeez. There we go. That's better. Here we go. So now, here we go. So they are going to put their three if they have gotten it, okay? And if not, uh, let me double check. Yeah, basically I want everything. I mean, welcome to life, right? I mean, hello. Uh, if there's an asterisk, uh, reveal the next advisor, okay? So, in other words, normally it would be advisor number three, which he does not have his three yet, and it would go on to the muster spot. Well, it says to reveal the next one. There we go. His four will go on to movement. Now, they will bribe as well. The game will, okay? If to be able to get to the top space or if they have the same level of advisor, then they will add a coin, all right? So it's their four and uh, movement. Okay, so their four comes out here under movement. Okay, easy enough? Okay, so we have a one, two, and five. Um, I think I wanna build and I want a tax, because that could get us two wood. I think. Oh, man. I want scheme cards. 
I want to attack. Yeah, I want to do everything. Um... You know what? Actually, I think I'm going to come over here to the scheme. I think I will do that because that's going to activate before the other stuff. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that, I think. So that I can maybe play a scheme card that will then help me in activating something else, right? Yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. So his next action, oh, is a two uh, onto the scheme. Wow, that, there's that. All right, so we're gonna draw one less. That's all right. So he's gonna grab his two, come over here. His is higher, bumps me down like so. Done, all right. Oh, I also should point out, you are not allowed to double up on an area unless you've already placed in three separate columns. Of course, the game cheats, and it's allowed to do whatever it wants. It doesn't have to follow that rule. Hm. I think we build next. So I'm going to go ahead and place my two on the build. That'll work. All right, game turn. Okay, so on this one, whenever it shows a coin on there, uh, the game will add enough coins to be able to, be able to uh, get to the top of that. And you'll notice it is a two, okay? Uh, a moment, let me double check something. So they don't have their two. So we will keep going. And they're one. Now note that it does not have the coin symbol next to it. And by the way, we're doing this priority because this is where their priority is, to be clear, okay? So because it has a coin action icon next to it, they add as many coins as needed to be able to go onto the top space. However, a moment while I double check something now. What I, one thing that I am not certain about now is, and Kirk, uh, unlocking bonuses for themselves. Um, how do they do that? because they only have three money, so it wouldn't be enough to go. So what I'm talking about is it says to put their one up here, so their one would go there. But, uh, oh, you know what, it doesn't have a coin icon. I'm an idiot, Never mind. it goes below it, Dur. my turn. All right, so now that I've placed in three different um, ones, I can double up if I want, but I am not going to. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and tax there. Yeah, that feels good. And then, and their five is also going to go onto the tax action. Now, if it's the same advisor power, they add a coin. Well, that sucks. So here, so you guys can see that. So they're five. They're gonna add one of their three coins, which now makes that a six. That sucked. Now I could have, I can't retroactively put bribes, but I could have when I put it on there to you know, ensure that I was going to, but I just didn't think that was going to happen. So there's our first glory to Rome. Screw you, uh, Zviat Tepulk. Grrrr. Oh, they would, oh, 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 they would have gone on to the build instead. Okay. For their two. Oh, okay. So, don't, backing that up. Uh, okay. So let's, let me show you guys this. So the two with the asterisk isn't happening, so it would have gone up and it would have done this one. So their two instead actually would have gone there and they would have added a coin to then be able to bump that up. Like so. There we go. Cool. Got it. I have fixed that problem. All right. So we have placed all of our advisors now. Okay. So now what's going to happen is we're going to take the card. I'm going to put it on top because now everything else that is used for that card is going to, we're gonna to need to see, and we've already now revealed what their actions are, like so. So I'm gonna bring that down so it's a little easier to reach. Okay, that makes sense? Yeah, they, they definitely mess with my placement this turn. Uh, that's all right, but this shows how, how the game, you know, how it's interactive even though it's a solo game, right? All right, so I go first. So I get to do the first one, my number one. So my number one is going to be right there. Now, again, there's no changing of first player, so you ignore the first player marker. But as it is, I get to draw three scheme cards from any one deck and then keep one of them. Okay, cool, easy enough. So let's go with this one because and you guys haven't seen me shuffle these. Okay, so one, two, three. And it says to put the discards in, in the middle. I'm just gonna put them off camera. All right, there we go. All right, so let's take a look at what our cards were, okay? And I want to make sure that I get all of the symbols right on this stuff. All right, so they give you a reward. Um, yeah, so basically this will give me one attack and a coin. And then this shows a casualty. So just the casualty is if you draw it for a random. Okay, so that's not bad. An extra attack, I'm not attacking this round. And a coin, coins are always nice. A couple of movement, not bad. Or... A couple of musterings. Getting more troops out there seems like a pretty good idea. So, you know what? I'm going to keep the muster card, although the coin is awfully nice. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep that. I'm just going to put it right there. So these now, uh, after you've drawn them, Yes, they go back onto the top of the deck in whatever order I want. The other card that is tempting to me is the attack and the uh, coin, so I'm going to put that one on top there. Obviously, if this is multiplayer, no one would know that. There we go. Boom, done. That was my one. Done. All right, so now the game's turn. 
the game's turn is he's going to muster, okay? Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Try, uh, I, uh, and Sander says, I always try to not let them uh, muster and move too much, keep up the pressure. That makes sense. Um, so the only, the only honest rules question that I think I have at all is how did they unlock their bonuses? That's pretty much it. All right, so he's gonna do his first actions, which are mustering, okay? So they're going to uh, start off any areas they occupy but don't rule, which they rule, rule, rule. So that is a step. So we're going to skip that part. The second thing is, um, ah, hold on. Player aid's a little too um, abrupt. One in each region that they occupy but do not rule in location order, location order being the order up there, okay? Then, if the uh, Rebellion still have any muster points remaining, they muster one troop in each region they rule in location order until all uh, points are spent. Okay, easy enough. It's very dark and brooding music, isn't it? All right, so we take a look at this. Smolensk. Uh, they are not in Smolensk. The next is uh, Polotsk. They are. So they're going to muster one there. And then the next one is Kiev, as you can see right there. So, all right, done. So they put another one in Kiev. They're done. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Ah, when they take a scheme action, they unlock a bonus. Thank you for that. I that was that was kicking my butt. All right, so my number two now is going to be to build. And as you can see, it's only a single build point here, right? Okay. So we're gonna pull our two back. And for our build, ah, it's anywhere that you rule you can build for one point, or where Mstislav is. Well, I guess we're going to build there, since we only have one build point. Now, the bonus actions that we can take, I want to make sure I don't mess this up. We could play our scheme. Uh, we can accomplish any deeds. We can convert goods. We're not going to do any of that. So you know what? We're just going to go ahead and build. And... Okay, to build in, uh, that would be the one build point. I could make a case for the marketplace because we were talking about building or for trading, right? To be able to fill this up. But the church, the church allows us to remove this and add another. I feel like that might be a bit of overkill though. Stay on target. Let's go ahead and build our marketplace. Novigrad. Done. Done. Okay. Easy enough. Okay. Thank you, Kirk. All right. So they're number two. Now, this doesn't matter at this point. So this just goes back into the supply. So now, you know what? I think I'll zoom in when we're placing them, but when we're actu actually activating them, I think you guys can see that pretty clearly. So I think they can see that from space. So they get a two build actions. So let's run through what they're doing, okay? So in this hierarchy, in location order, in priority build order, okay? Where they rule and they have no structures. Okay, so getting into that and make sure I get this right since it's the first time. So the hierarchy are regions they rule and don't have any of their structures in location order, location order being that. In regions they don't rule and they do not have any of their structures. So don't rule and don't have their structures. Then 
regions they rule but are occupied by either my troops, neutral troops, or they already have one of their structures in location order. And finally, regions they rule that also have any of their structures in location order. All right, they're gonna build the topmost structure that they can build shown in the current priority column. Very simple, okay? So, those are the three places where they rule. So, we know that's going to be Polotsk because that's going to be the first one mentioned right there and priority rule is here. Top one is going to be a marketplace in Polotsk. Done. They rule, so it's only cost them one point. So then, we then start back over. And look, because they have one more build point. So, what's that going to be? Region they rule that don't have any of their structures. Okay, so the next spot is going to be Kiev. So what are they going to build? And it's always going to be the topmost. So that should be another marketplace. So that's going to be a marketplace in Kiev. Done. Easy enough. Okay. Have a good night, Franny. Thanks for hanging out. Okay. Cool. So now we are on to R number four. R number four is three muster, and you have to muster where there where you have troops. Okay. Well, I want to be able to move Mr. Slav out of there. So I think we go ahead and put. You know what? We're gonna go there and Rostov. I also want a fur. So there is the fur, which is down here. So that was two. And I think I will go ahead and do a third in Novgorod. So that is my three mustering, easy enough, all right? Yeah, all right, easy enough. So now, his four, his four, three movement. Did I mention the game cheats? <laughs> and what I mean by that is they, there, there are certain rules that the rebellion does not have to follow. They get to teleport, whereas I don't get to teleport, right? All right. So each movement point allows them to move one of their troops to any region, regardless of the distance. Okay. So they move one at a time, uh, depending on, so whatever their priority is. Okay. So because their priority is the tax or the cart symbol, all right, the rebellion moves troops to a single region. They do not rule in location order until all their movement points are spent. However, they will never uh, cede a region to me. So if I were here and I had one troop, they would never move all three of them. Or if I had two troops, they would never drop below two troops, for instance. They will, they will always leave at least one troop in a region. And uh, they always move from the closest region uh, with available troops. If tied, move a troop from the region lowest in the location order. That makes sense, okay? Uh, and then last but not least, they always move from Sviatopolk if there's a choice of which troop to move from a region, okay? They'll always move him, okay? All right, so that said, they're going to move to a single region, and they had a total of three movement. And where are they going to move to? Looks like they're going to move to uh, Smolensk. Now, why do I say Smolensk? Because if you take a look... Uh, here, the first one that they do not rule is Smolensk. Okay. So move troops to a single region they do not rule in location order until all movement points are spent. Okay. Well, they move from the closest area. So that will be one. That'll be two. They're leaving one in there. And then from the next closest area, 
with available troops. And if there's a choice of which troop to move from this region, they will move Big Daddy. Now that's just the leader, right? Oh, you know what? I realize I did not talk about what their special ability is or what his special ability is. Probably ought to do that. When Sviatopolk attacks you, the rebellion reveals one less scheme card. At the end of each round, they muster one troop in his region. Yay. And by yay, I mean that sucks. So, there we go. He's done with his movement. This is all pretty cut and dried, I think. Pretty simple. There's a hierarchy that you have to follow, but other than that, it's well laid out in the new version of the rule book. So, okay. All right. Okay. So next is our five. We get one trade. However, you know what? There is, uh, you know what? I don't want to, I forgot that I had this. I could have used this to muster two more troops and I would have put them in Smolensk, but I can't now because I, yeah, that feels like cheating. So I won't. All right. So I will trade and I'm going to trade uh, there in Novgorod, and I only need, or I'm sorry, I'm going to tax, not trade, I apologize. So taxing, uh, wrong thing. All right, so I am going to take that resource, okay? It only takes, well, I rule already, so hold on. But, yeah, I will do it here. So I'm going to take this wood. And because I have a marketplace there, I can either take a coin or a wood. And I'll just go ahead and take another wood. Put it down there on my player board. Easy enough. Okay. So now you see we have two of those, which I can always freely move coins to cover stuff as well. Okay. All right. All right, so now the game is going to go ahead and tax. Get rid of their coin. And for the tax action, they decide where to spend their tax points in a hierarchy again. By the way, this is available on BGG for a solo. Definitely recommend printing this off. All right, so the tax, A, B, C, D, okay? Uh, wherever they rule in an unfilled boat column. In location order. Okay. So if we take a look at location order again, I think you guys have it committed to memory now. It's Smolensk, uh, Polotsk, and Kiev. Okay. Um, and if it contains one of their markets, they'll always take an extra good from the supply instead of taking a coin. Well, they have a market here and they have a market here, which are in the two, first two regions. So they do actually rule in Smolensk now because they have one, two, three, I have two, and the neutral has one. All right, so that means they're going to take the honey here, place it on their board. Then the second area uh, is going to be Polotsk and they're going to take an extra stone because they have a marketplace. Wow, that, that's ugly. Okay. And then, finally, Kiev, they have a marketplace, they get an extra wood. Wow, that sucked. Wow, really? All right, so they've already filled that column. They're halfway to that one and two thirds on that one. Yay. All right, so that is the end of the action phase. All right, so now we move into the claim phase, okay? All right, so let me walk through this. So we are in the third and final step. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, so players advance in their quest to claim the throne. So you check to see if you meet the conditions on the claim board. So let's go ahead and show you guys the claim board. All right.
So how many regions do I rule? Two. And you can share location, uh, you can share uh, rows with other players, okay? All right. So, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> all right, let, let me go through, uh, go through mine. So I'm building, I only have one building out there, so I don't have on two adjacent, so not that. And as far as goods on a boat, Let me double check. Yeah, that's it. All right. Whereas the Rebels, they have one, two, three, four. Okay, that sucks. Uh, they have marketplaces built, or they have two buildings built in adjacent regions. And uh, how many goods on a boat do they have? One, two, three, four, and five. Oh. You know what? That's actually a really good point. Have a good one, Kirk. Um, Sander brought up a really good point. So hold on. There's something I messed up. Let's go back to their movement. Because here, let's go back to that. That's a really good point. So when they move, they're going to move to a single region that they do not rule in location order until all movement, right? So then, instead of coming from Kiev, they're actually going to come from uh, Volin. And the reason is because Volin is later on the list. So, okay. It doesn't change a lot, but basically it means that comes up there as opposed to boss man. It literally changed nothing over there but I digress. So that is advancing on the claim tracks. Now earn income. So every player earns income, two categories. Claim and aware warfare markers, okay? One coin for every claim and warfare marker they have not yet placed on the claim board. So one, two, three coins for me. Because I haven't placed those. Uh, You know what? Hold on one second. That's right. The let me let me redo these because I forgot the AI does this differently. Okay, so the AI does this. Assign the first player marker. Um, first off, we're gonna do a priority. So if you occupy more regions than the rebellion, it will move over to here. I do not. If you have structures in more adjacent regions than the Rebellion, he'll go to that. No. Otherwise, if you have more goods on your boat than the Rebellion, assign it to that. No. Otherwise, assign to the starting priority column. So in other words, it stays where it is. Okay? All right. After advancing on the uh, rule build for each track on which you are ahead, after advancing on that, for everyone that you're ahead of the Rebellion, move the top coin from the current priority column of the Rebellion's household mat to their dock to unlock a new bonus. There you go. Okay. So, I lied. That goes four. They are in two adjacent regions, and they have five goods on their boat. So, they, claim, they clear none of these off of their board because they're ahead of us on all of those because I've done a very poor job of that. So I got my income. Uh, they gain one coin by default. And one coin for every column of their boat that is completely filled with goods. Completely filled. That's one more. Done. 
One coin for every column of their boat, completely filled. Zero. I'm doing a very poor job so far. Okay. And now, starting with the me, I get to choose a deed card from the face-up row. The game never gets deed cards. Okay. So now I get to choose one of those. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, probably don't want the horde one. Six troops, potentially we could do that and that would give us a point and one movement. But you know what, scheme card, get it, I really don't want to get rid of wood. Not yet, because I have to get up that trade track. So I guess we're taking the amass forces. So we will take this one into our hand. And then we reveal one more. There is a variant where you could just wipe them if you would like. Let's go and play that, shall we? So, capital city, have one of each in there, in one region. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe those out of the game. Reward laborers. So, uh, discard two goods and two coins. You get to draw some cards. And uh, border patrols. That one is... Remove one of your troops from three different regions and then move two of your troops anywhere regardless of distance. That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Yeah. All right. Done. New round. We go first. Here we go. Okay. I need goods, so I'm definitely going to want to build another marketplace, and building adjacent would be good. So I'm thinking we go ahead and build a marketplace, probably here in Rostov. I'm okay with that, and then we can vacate that area a bit. So we're going to definitely build, do we build twice this round? Do we tax more than once? Because if we tax, we can get extra resources as long as we move, Mr. Slav. So I think moving has got to be a priority. Getting more troops out and being able to beat them down as well. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? Well, we have a two muster. So I'm going to use that at some point this round and not screw that up. That would give us five. Oh, I really want to be able to... I, I want a fifth action this turn, and I don't have it. Oh, and I forgot to uh, reseed resources also. I apologize. Um, yeah. So we get a, another honey here. We get a stone there, and we get a wood up there. There we go. Now that he's left those open, that also isn't... All right, we're definitely going to want to move. And I definitely want to be able to move a lot. So we're going to go ahead and throw that up there. So now, bottom card, not looking. Okay. Oops. So is all, hopefully this is making sense at this point. You guys hopefully enjoying this. There we go. So he still has the priority over here in the cart. So... Here we go. There we go. Uh, so that is advisor number two over on the scheme deck. See that? Two scheme deck. All right. And it's not the asterisk one, so that'll go there. 
So I have that. going to go ahead and put a build four up there. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me, let me reverse those. No, no, I want to move before I build. Reason is I want to move Mr. Slav out of there before I build. Yes. Okay. There we go. Whew. All right. All right, so let's see, what are they doing now? They're putting their five on tax, okay? What do we do now? I think attacks have got to happen. So let's go and kill some stuff. Good with that. And now his one is going on trade as well. Did I mention he gets to break, he gets to break that rule? So we have our one left, but remember we can bribe if there's something we desperately want to do. Now we're going to be able to be able to muster two of those. I'm not going to worry about the amass forces part yet. So what do I do with my other action? I'm kind of leaning towards another attack. Because that's going to free up people to be able to move around more and remove some of their stuff from the board. And will give us control of three, maybe four regions. Yep. I'm going to go there. And he has us four left. Is it worth... I don't think so. We're not going to, I'm not going to spend any coins. All right. So yeah, that's it. Uh, his two with the, a oh, sorry, you guys can't see that. Shoot. Uh, there you go. The two with the asterisk he doesn't have yet. So not there. Uh, his four will go into the build and he will spend enough coins to get to the top. He only has three and he can. Son of a. Dude, all right. So that's going to be a four and two coins. Golly, that sucks. All right. So that's all the actions. So this will now go onto the top. That's what happens. You cut your nails. There we go. All right. So we're first now in the action phase. So we're going to attack some stuff. Yeah. All right, so we're automatically going to get, we're going to draw one casualty or one scheme card to see if there's a casualty. Um, there's no strongholds out there, so no extra cards for that, but it's whoever rule, if I rule, I don't have to draw another card. Damn, only being able to build one hurt. Oh, 
where do we kill them? Do we kill the neutral in Novograd, which allows me to move two of those troops out of there, including uh, Mstislav, or do I kill one of his out of here? It doesn't allow me to rule, but I will be able to here shortly. I think that's what we do. So we're going to go ahead and attack there. Now I'm only going to draw one card. And I do not remember. I should have remembered this. Damn it. Hey, Patrick. Nice. Ah. Uh, I cannot... I cannot remember if that one had a casualty. I know one of them did and one of them didn't. Because this one did. Wait. The boot did not. The other one did. So that has a casualty. So I'm going to draw this one. Boom. No casualty. That'll work. <laughs> Memory for the win. All right. So that is uh, that was my one. His one is going to be a tax. And looking at the tax for him... It's where he rules uh, in an unfulfilled column. So that'll be honey or wood. So that'll be, he doesn't rule here now. Where he rules, which will be, did I forget to put a wood up there? I think I did. I must have. He also rules that, but stone is full. So it's going to be wood. And he has a marketplace. So he will always take an extra good. It said, and that will go onto there like so, okay? So now if you take a look at his cheating board, okay? Now I want a margarita, Patrick. So if you take a look at his board, he's got that column full, that column full, and the extra right there, okay? So that means he's going to be able to get, um, you know what, hold on. Let me move that down a little so you guys can see. There we go. So, he's going to get coins for having these filled, right? So, yay, lucky me. Okay. So, that is his one trade action. He's done. So, my two is a couple more attacks. And this is where I screwed up. But, they're individual attacks, remember? So, I will go ahead and attack one of these. And then, since I know one of these is a casualty, we will draw this. Not a casualty. Awesome. And now I rule that area, so that's good. Do I completely eliminate them? But I already rule, and I'm going to be moving. I should have moved first, then I did the second attack. Mistakes were made. I would have come down here. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and punt him out of Smolensk. And you know what? All right, we have a casualty. So. Okay. We don't rule right now, but we will here in a little bit because we're going to get a, uh, a move in. And... In addition to that, I can go ahead and play one of these cards. So I'm going to. So I'm going to go ahead and muster. Ooh, wait a minute. No, I'm not. Check that. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, before the first. I thought the attacks were individual, though. It will defer to. Let's see, so the attacking, no, I don't want. I'm double checking. Oh, by the way, uh, one, two, three, by the way, um, yeah. 
yeah, so I did that right. Okay, just checking. Yeah, I did that right. So, if it rules the region when you attack, uh, so I would draw another. So I will have drawn two cards for each of them. So I've drawn two cards. Oh, uh, that's why. So if that's the case, I am going to go ahead and spend that card to muster. And I will, understanding that, I will have done that first so that I then ruled. I had four to his three. So there we go. Now I understand what you're saying, Sander. Okay. Yep. Yep. Nope. I, because if I would have played that first, which is what I would have done had I understood that rule. There you go. So I actually had four here to his three to his one. So I ruled. So I'm only going to draw one card for each of them. So the question is, actually, that's two different attacks. So I misspoke. That would be two attacks there. All right. Good. So we're good. All right. Cool. Bueno. All right. So now his number two. He doesn't draw scheme cards. So for the scheme, move the top coin from the current priority column to the dock. So current priority, this one to the dock there. So now what that means is, <laughs> geez. So not only does he draw one less uh, scheme card um, when he attacks, right? Oh, and he should have uh, mustered one troop in his region. I need to do that retroactively. But in addition to that, now whenever he attacks, he draws one less card even more. So they're cumulative. So he draws two less cards. That sucks. That's gross. And he should have mustered one more troop in the region he is. So he should have done that as well. There we go. All right. Cool. All right. So our four, now we're going to get a move on. So we got three, and they must be to adjacent regions, right? So. One. Two, Three. Done. Okay. So now we'll get rid of the coins. He's going to build. In, he has two build points here. So for his building, where he rules and he has no structures. So that's first one. So that's going to be here. And because... We are still in the priority of the uh, the tax action. The top one is going to be marketplace. So his third marketplace then is going to go in Volan. That's going to be one of the two build points. The second one is going to be somewhere he doesn't rule and has no structures. Let me double check that. Hold on. In location order, uh, let's see. Okay, so places they do not rule and do not have any of their structures in location order. Okay, so let's take a look at 
this. So the first one is Chernigov, which is n right there. They, d I thought they had to be present, right? To build, make sure I'm not uh, cheating. Yeah, in regions they occupy. Okay, so that doesn't apply. So in that case, what that means is it's, I grabbed my marketplace, didn't I? I did, I'm cheating. Their marketplace, there. So that's their first build point. The second one, they only occupy these three regions. So at that point, then it's going to be anywhere they rule, they have AI structures and enemy troops, which means it's going to be here. And then the order is going to be a church. But the rule for building a church is there has to be a region, a region or it has to be occupied by any of your non-leader or neutral troops, which does, which means they get to remove one of my troops and they get to place one of theirs whenever they place a church. That was totally in the wrong location again. There we go. There. Cool. All right. All right. So that is both their actions. That really kind of sucked. Because um, now I don't rule here. <laughs> Glory to Rome to you, Zviatopolk. I want to see somebody try and beat this on four. Wow. All right, so I only have one build point. Oh, wait, no. I Even though I don't rule here, I still can because of Mr. Slav's. Okay, so that's not so bad. So you know what? We're going to return the favor, I think. Ah, that's really not what I was going to do, though. I was going to go into Smolensk and put a marketplace. Nope, we're going to we're going to change it up here. So I'm going to build the church there and do the exact same thing that he just did to me. So we're going to put it there. It only costs one build point because that's uh Mr. Slav's special ability. So we get to remove one of their troops and we get to place one of ours. And now we rule. That's better. And that was our build. Did I really not tax this right now? One, two, I did not tax, oh my God. Wow, okay. So then, he's going to tax. So for his tax, anywhere he rules, unfilled boat column. Yes. So we'll get, uh, da, 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 da. this is going to be in location order. So let's see. Where he rules an unfilled boat column. So wood is filled. So no, it's still going to be Volin because that's the only one that qualifies for that first rule. So that'll be two fish, goes there. That's gonna be one of his two taxes. So then, don't rule unfilled boat, boat column. Stone, he's full on stone, so it's not going to be there. So, no. Where else can he? A rule filled bolt column is next. So filled rule. Uh, so that's going to be here. And he has a marketplace, so it'll be a second stone. Done. That's better. All right. 
That's both of their, both of his builds. All right, so now claims. Oh, where are we on claims? So let's see here. Looking at the claim board, how many regions do we, uh, do we rule? We rule one, two to one, two, three, because I moved that out. Had I left that, that would have been four, but that'd be three. How many regions does he rule? Two, but he does not drop down because remember, it's a one-way escalator up, but at least he doesn't go up, so there's that. So the next one then is going to be on uh, adjacent builds in regions. So it looks like he has one, two, three, I have two. So he goes there, I go there. Okay, cool. And now trades. How many goods on a boat? Still two. What was the goal again? Just saying. He has one, two, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He now has eight. This, these do not count because they're not on his boat. So that's going to be eight. That puts him there. All right. So his... Now for changing priority over here, it's going to be, if I occupy more regions than him, one, two, three, four to his three. So he's going to go into that priority over there. Okay. All right. For each track that I'm ahead of him on the rebellion track, no, or on the, uh, on that, on the claim tracks. He unlocks a new bonus. That's none of them. And then he gets one coin by default. And he gets a coin for every uh, column on his boat that is filled. Yuck. It's another two. So he has plenty of money to outbid me on stuff. Awesome. All right. So for us... Uh, one coin for every claim and warfare marker that I haven't placed on the board yet. That'd be one. Okay. And then for every... Yeah, none. Then I get to choose a deed card. All right. So let's take a look at the deed cards again. That border patrol is kind of tempting. Take three uh, units off the board from different locations and then move two onto the board anywhere. Anywhere. Yep. Yeah. Because the other two are just, I mean, you got to have all three things built in one. Eh. Get rid of two goods and two coins. No. So, yeah, it's going to be Border Patrols. And we're going to wipe all the cards. So what do we have here? Hire Mercenaries. Get rid of a fish. Get rid of a stone and two bucks. And you get an attack, and you take one less casualty draw. That's good. Generous Prince. Pay four and recruit two. That, 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 I like that one. The Great Library. Discard a card out of your hand and a stone, and you get a build point. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So now we replenish the goods. So let's see. We got one there. Nope. One there. A stone. Can't believe I didn't. Ugh. Okay, that's done. Advance the round marker. Hey, we get our second ones. That's going to be helpful. I hope. Done. Penultimate round. Okay. I'm enjoying the music. How about y'all? All right. 
One of each in one region. Oh, no matter who owns it. Really? Really? What is that? Capital City? Let me have a marker. Mar no. Uh, oh, wow, that's vague. Have a market stronghold and church in the same region. I'm going to keep it as is. That's really. Are you sure, Sander? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to I'm going to keep that one, but it feels like it, it it's implied that it's one of each of yours in the same region. That's what it feels like. All right. I've got to tax. I think we tax last. So that's going to be a five, but I think I wait on that, maybe? I'm definitely going to want to muster. That's, you know what, actually? Yeah, I feel all right with that. Okay, I believe you, Sander. All right, on page seven. All right. Okay, well, if that's the case, I'm s if that's the case, I will swap out that card. Take the capital city instead because he gives me the free trade. All right, so let's see what he's doing this round. Okay. So remember, he's now on the attack and movement part. So there's gonna be bloodshed this round. Okay, let's see. He's gonna move with his regular two. So this one. So I want to build. I want to move first. No, I don't. Did that in the wrong order again. That'll be that. If it had gone into that column, I wouldn't have changed it. Um, so the last thing I want to do is tax. So that, and I don't think he's going to focus on taxing. I'm good with that. Because if I muster first, get six in one region, then I get a free movement and I can move him over and get the build there. Which then, if I'm going to build first, I need, or I, then I need to build and then tax. I did this in the wrong order again. It's getting more expensive. I'm working my way backwards with this. There, tax, and build. So build is going to be the four. Okay, final answer. Sheesh, this is hard. His three doesn't exist yet. All right, his two is going to go to a muster. And he's not going to be able to outbid me, so 
It's not going to. Yay. That's good. So the four is a build. Let's go ahead and do that now. I don't think he's going to. So, muster, get that, get a free movement, then I build, and then I tax. Yes, final answer. All right. So, his four is going to go oh, on a muster, and he will pay enough coins to get him onto the top space. So, that's a five, so he'll pay two coins. <laughs> oh, you suck so bad, dude. Oh, that, that hurt. That hurt. And it's now full. He'll pay two coins. Oh, 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 that hurt. Oh, glory to Rome, dude. Oh, that hurt. Because now, now I can't, you, I won't hit the amass forces. Oh, you suck so bad. Oh, boy. And I can't put another one there to outbid him. I wouldn't be able to anyways. It's only six, but wow. So he has his five. Okay, well. One. I guess I could, you know what, I'll pay a coin. That'll work. Okay. His five goes to attack, I assumed it was going to. Uh, so what do I do with my last one now? It is entirely possible that I could get four trades. And I have two builds, so it'd be one. I think three trade is enough. Oh, what do I do with that last one? You know what? I'm willing to roll the dice on this because that's going to potentially give us some extra actions because I don't have any scheme cards. I think that works out. I'm good with that. All right, so his one now is going to be a scheme card, and if it's the same, <laughs> he adds a coin. I almost added one and decided, nah, he's not gonna, oh, yeah, 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 he is. All right. Oh, this is dirty, dude. Did me dirty. All right, so I'm up first. So we're gonna draw two scheme cards. We'll go and grab from this, since I know what those are. So that's an attack and a coin or a m one move, I think it was. And since I have the moves 
I won't have the move. I have a move here. I don't need that. I'd rather do that, I think. I think so. Okay. All right, so what do we got? An attack, not terrible. Or could I interest you in an attack, sir? But I know that one of these now, the top one does not have a casualty. So at least there's that. Okay, so his number one is he's going to remove the uh, top coin. So there, and that's going to be uh, every time he moves, he gets an extra movement, I believe is what that is. Just double checking. Yeah, whenever he takes a movement action, he gets one additional after he's done. So, yeah. All right. So now my twos. Do I want to muster first? Or do I want to move first? I think I want to muster. So I'm going to muster a total of two. And because I don't have six, I'm not going to bother there. So I will put one there. And I will put one there. That way I rule it. All right, his twos, he always goes left to right when the same number. So he has to pay a coin. And then for his single muster, uh, anywhere he occupies but doesn't rule. So it's going to be here. It's going to be in location order, but literally it's only one spot, so it's going to be there. Good thing I added that one. All right. So my number two now is going to be my movement. And now all of a sudden I don't know if I'm actually using this. Oh, and I should put this on top. So his movement is going to be in location order. Anywhere he doesn't occupy. So he's going to move here and here. And then he has two movements, so it's going to be there. Okay. So what do I do with my three movement now? Because I rule four locations, right, or four regions right now. Oh, man. Uh, I'm tempted to move these two down, or at least one. It takes away one of his, but it also takes away one of mine, doesn't it? Um, yeah, that doesn't help me. Uh, hey, Alexander. Wow, am I really going to forego this action now?
Oh, wait, I have three move. Ah! I was thinking about moving two down here into Chernigov. And then moving one over, but then I... Oh, wait. If I'm building a stronghold here, I can. So here we go. Two down here. And one there. That'll work. I like that. So now, he's going to move two. And his movement, because he is somewhere, it, it, the priority here is where he doesn't occupy, it's going to be to target region regardless of uh, distance, somewhere he doesn't occupy. Occupies, occupies, does not, does not. So it's going to be to each of those, uh, Pereyaslavi, or I'm sorry, Pereyaslavl, and Chernigov. So where does he move from now is the question. Let me double check. That's the only thing that I think at this point, that's just about the only thing I don't have committed to uh, enemy or to. Uh, it'll be uh, to memory. Kiev or uh, furthest down or to be from Kiev first. So the first one will be to there. And I forgot to add one more troop at the end of the second round for him. So that would have been there. Uh, and then he will add one into there. That's his two movement. He's done. So for us, we get two build points. I rule. I rule. I don't rule, but I have... Uh, Mstislav, so we'll go ahead and put a stronghold there. We rule it now, remember, because a stronghold is a plus one. For uh, when factoring it or uh, computing... I'm figuring out who rules as far as the count goes. And whenever I get attacked in that region... Uh, they reveal one extra scheme card, right? All right. But now there is all three types in there. So this one happens. Move those over. And that gives me an immediate free trade. So the trade will be... I'll go ahead and take that would and because it has a marketplace in it there's an extra wood done and now i rule this because and that i'm actually going to that'll work you guys can see that okay nice i'm happy with that okay so his four he's going to muster three And for his mustering, it's going to be anywhere he occupies but doesn't rule. He rules, he rules, does not rule, does not rule, does not rule. So now it's going to be in order. All right, so. Polotsk, and then Kiev, and then Pereyaslav. Okay, so Polotsk, and he's mustering three. He does not rule. So the next one is he's going to add another one there. So that's now four there. He rules now. So now anywhere else he does not rule. Oh, this is, this is gross. There's that. Nope, sorry. It will go here. Because he did not rule because of that. One, two, three. 
how many does he have here? He has four. I have one, two, three. When I move this stuff around, I'm supposed to move that one instead. That was the whole point, so I could build the marketplace there. Which I didn't... Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, wow, I am not good at this. I like the way this works. I'm just terrible at it. Because I have a free attack if I want to use it here. But the problem is... He's either going to attack me here. Well, he'll attack here and I'll lose this. Or he attacks me there and I'm already losing that. So you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and use the free attack to remove that, and I rule it, so I only draw one, and I know that one's safe, so that's good, so done. And it just gets them out of here and it protects that, now at least. So now, I have two trade. It's only going to get me two resources. Oh, that is so bad. Um, oh God. Yeah. So I rule this and I rule this. That's it. So I'll take the honey and the fish. Oof. That's bad. All right. So he's going to attack for two now. So his priority for attacking is he's going to attack me first and spends all the attack points in a single region if possible. And because he's on this, it's going to be anywhere he doesn't rule. He rules, he rules, he rules, he rules. So the second one is somewhere he does rule in location order. Location is Polotsk. So he's going to remove both of those. So I lose that one. And I lose that one. And because he rules, he would only draw one card. But because I have a stronghold, he would actually draw two cards. But because he has this, and whenever he attacks minus that, he actually doesn't draw any cards now. And I should have given him one extra movement. Oops. So his movement would have been anywhere he doesn't occupy. So let's see. Plus, Novograd. And that would have come from Volin. Can't do it from Volin. It would have come from Smolensk. No, Smolensk would have been the first one. Check that. And it would have come from uh, Kiev. Or, nope, it would have come from here. There you go. That was his bonus move I forgot to give him. All right. Well, that sucked. Okay. So we go into the next phase, claim phase. So where am I? How many do I now control? One, two, three, four, four. So we look at the claim board, and it's going to bump it up to there. So that's four regions. Okay. How many does he control? He no longer controls this because he would have had to have made that move earlier. That's good. But one, two, three. Only controls three, so yay. There's that. 
uh, building in adjacent regions. Two. And he has three, so that didn't change there. How many goods on a boat? I got five. He's got two, four, five, six, seven, eight. His doesn't change. I'm on the board. We have got to get at least two more on there, though, at the end of the next round. Have to. He attacked as well, didn't he? That goes on there. Done. And I attacked. So that goes there with my bonus card. Nice. Forgot to move those. All right. Uh, so now we need to check. So his priority. If I occupy more regions than him, I'm in one, two, three, four, five. He's in one, two, three, four. It stays where it is. Okay. Uh, I am not ahead of him on any of those. He adds a troop where he is. That's at the end of a round. So didn't count for anything else. He gets a coin just for GP. He gets a coin for having that row completed, that row completed. That's two more coins. He has five. I, on the other hand, get my coins for... I have everything on the board there, and I have one row on the boat complete, so I get one more. Good. And now deed cards for the last time. I have four bucks. That's a two muster, isn't it? I have a fish. I can't get rid of resources. So the generous prince seems pretty good. That'll work. And oh, hey, I already qualify for that. But let's go ahead and see what the other ones would be. Just so you guys can see more cards. Get rid of a card and a couple of honey to, for a build. Send gifts. Wow. You get to teleport two workers or two troops anywhere. But man, that's expensive. A fish, a fur, and two uh, money. Ouch. And a trade route, get rid of three resources for two cash. All righty. All right, so replenish the goods now. Let's see. We got a fish. We got a honey. We got a wood. And final round. So. We got all of our workers now. Now it's going to be a bloodbath, I have a feeling. You guys digging this? Oh. When he is attacking, it's minus one. So he still draws a card. Fair point. When he draws for casualties, though, that is a fair point. You choose which scheme deck they reveal cards from. Ah, oh, one of them died. Here. From the Battle of Polensk. Polatsk. Good. Okay. That's cool. Way to go, Sander. Thanks. All right. New round, final round. So let's work backwards. Yeah. I need, ideally, four resources. So I need to build. I'm going to build here, and then I'm going to tax. I don't want wood. I need stone and fish. So I need two builds and two taxes. Build, build, 
tax, tax, and I'm golden. I feel like that's got to be the priority. So I need builds first. Tax last. But if I do it last, I run a risk of him attacking me and messing things up, right? So how about we do this? But I also, oh, for mustering, oh, good Lord. Um, I feel pretty confident being able to do tax that late. Because I can spend the money, the four, to be able to get, uh, do two musters. If need be as an emergency. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. All right, let's see what he does. Oh, oh, there we go. All right. Yeah, I'm actually really digging this. I really am. So his regular two goes on to movement. On the move. Okay. I'm going to stall on the build. I'm debating whether or not to do a three or a two on the build. Because uh, I need the two build, right? And I don't want to do it too late. Oh, this is brutal. Um... And I can't spend any money because I only have four coins. So, if I use a 2 to attack, it pretty much guarantees me, but I might lose casualties. That's, that's the problem. Maybe not. You know what? I know this isn't an attack. That, that's a non-casualty. Ah, okay. I'm good with that. All right, let's see. So, his next one is... His three, and he'll pay to bump the attack. I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that right now, but I'm now I'm worried that he's going to actually pay on a later number on either his four or five to drop me down, and I can't spend the money for the attack. Mm -hmm. But I will get a coin. So, if I, so I might be able to have a coin that I can spare. Interesting. Okay. So the three will bump me down there. Okay. You know what? I got to be able to get something decent out of that that's going to be helpful. You would think so, right? And do that early so it gives me a little flexibility. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll buy that. All right, his next one. His number one is a muster. Okay.
I think I can run the risk and do this. It's a risk, but I think so. Uh, should I do the three? All right, let's do the three. Because if it's a two in a single, you know, a two, oh, wait, no, because if it's a two, he can add a coin for free, a three he can't. So, yeah, let's, let's try that. A four uh, on the scheme card. Okay. I'm all right with that. That feels a little wasted to me, but I'm okay with that. Okay. So those are the two musts, right? He has his five and a two, and I have my five and a two. Where do I think he puts them? I have no idea. I think we muster, but the question is, which do we do? Oh, all right, here we go. A five build. Are you fucking... Oh, I hate you so much. I would have sworn, sworn that the five was going to go on the attack. The five on the build is so nasty. Who is this, Greg? Oh, no, this is Ken. It clearly is channeling the, uh, the bot. Oh, that is brutal. Glory to Rome. Oh, golly. And here's the problem. Even if I put the five and I pay the coin, right, to go here, I need to build before I... Ah! And I could forego this to be able to get my fourth coin back to be able to... Okay. So if we only get one build... It's got to be here. So if we get a trade here, but now, actually, oh, you guys get to see the conversions happen. We might be able to make this work, actually. That gives us another build.
Okay. That might work. That might work. All right, and the final one. Let's hope I'm not killing myself on this, but let's see. Here we go. The last one is his special two goes on to combat. Right. And he's allowed to spend a coin if it's the same level, which he will, which bumps me down. Woo. All right, our, we're first. So here we go. We're going to draw a couple and maybe we get lucky. Here we go. Oh, it's a build and a coin. That literally is the best card I could have seen, I think. Okay. Or a couple movement. I think we'll keep the build and the coin. Thanks. Well, and then no casualty on the top. Well, that worked out. All right. So he's going to muster. So his mustering is somewhere he occupies and doesn't rule. And he musters two. Rules, 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 rules. Occupy doesn't rule. He's going to muster both of those, and now he rules. It's not the end of the world, I don't think. Oh, you know what? One moment. Okay, we're good. Um... Man, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I can afford the coin to attack him. Because I have this for the build, I think I can. So you know what, actually, Let's hold up. I'm actually going to use this card as part of this action. I'm going to get a coin and I'm going to build. Why wait, right? So I'll get a coin and I will go ahead and build that. And I rule so it only costs one bill point. Done. So now the actual action I will use. Yeah is I will pay that coin to go ahead and get a single attack. I'm going to advance on this, and I will go ahead and kill that. Now, I did not rule it. Ooh, hold on. Yeah, that's the problem, because I didn't rule, right? So I would have to draw two cards. And I know this one's safe, and I know this one's safe, but I believe it's from a single deck when you draw. Yep, a single scheme deck. So you, <laughs> see that's clever. That is clever. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So, no death, and there's a casualty.
They no longer rule it. All right. So his two going left to right is going to be three move. It's going to be an extra move here. So uh, four priority in location order, which we need to now move this to the top. So that is Kiev, Chernigov, and Rostov. There we go. Kiev, Chernigov, and Rostov in that order. Okay. So it's somewhere he doesn't occupy. He doesn't occupy Chernigov. So that will come from Polotsk. That's one of his three moves. He now occupies that. So now it will be Rostov from the lowest on there, which will be Palatska. So there, that's two. He now occupies that. So then Petroslavl, he does occupy Smolensk. He occupies... Uh, Novgorod, he doesn't occupy, and that will come, it can't come from Palats because he only has one there. He only has one in Volin. Novgorod, he doesn't have anybody in. Smolensk, he has two in. So it will come one from here to go up there. So that's his movement. That worked out really well. So now we get to muster three. Oh. He has an extra move, I forgot. So, his extra move then will be, he's in Kiev, he's in Chernigov, he's in Rostov, he's in Pereyaslav, he's in Smolensk. Is there anywhere? Wait, he's in everywhere. Okay, so back up. He's everywhere. So then, It will be so since he is everywhere now. So somewhere they do not rule in location order. Until oh wait, no 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 back up. The rebellion moves one troop at a time to each region they do not occupy in location order until they occupy all regions. They occupy all regions. Okay, their movement's done. Cool, we're good. So now we have three musters. So we will go there. His attacks are going to be somewhere he doesn't rule in a single region if possible. Kiev, Chernigov, it will be in Chernigov. So I think we do that. And then I'll go ahead and spend four coin for the generous prince to go ahead and muster two more. One here, if my math is right. And I cannot place that there because I don't have a presence. Oh, uh, that sucks. Um, I don't think it matters, but I want to make sure. Uh, 
because he's going to attack three of these here. So I will still rule that. Let's just, you know what? Yeah, let's put it there. Done. All right. So his two is going to be a single attack. And his attack uh, spends all the attacks in a single region somewhere he does not rule there. So this is Kiev, he rules. Chernigov, he does not. So he's going to he's going to kill off one of my guys. He does not rule. So he draws one, he draws two, minus one, so he draws one card. Let's hope he dies. This one I know is safe, so let's go uh, here. No, nope, he's safe. Boo. All right, my three. My three will be to build. And I will, I will build another marketplace in Smolensk. It only costs one. A, I rule, but also I have missed the Slav there. Okay? All right. So his three. He has two attacks in one region, if at all possible. So he'll kill both of them. There. And they're individuals, right? So he, one card, because the minus one again. So one card here, the first one, dead. So if that's the case, back that up. That actually goes there, because he died. So the second attack, he can't do in Chernigov. Oh my god. I didn't I didn't want him to die. I should have draw I should have drew the other deck cuz the next place is Rostov. Oh, that hurts. Cuz that kills him. He draws one card. He dies, but I still don't rule. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> I almost put it here as a just-in-case because it was closer to the order, but I was like, nah, I'll be an idiot. All right, so one trade. That'll be here for a honey. Check that. That'll be here for a fish, and I get a bonus fish. So, dare I say that would be two fish. Done. Here, he removes another coin there, which whenever he attacks, he gets an extra attack. Thankfully, uh, thankfully that didn't come into play until just now. And finally, we get two more trades. Oh. Hold on one second. I will trade here. I have a marketplace, so that's going to be a honey and a honey, and you guys are going to see something kind of fun here. And then, or not trade, but tax. So now, what I'm going to do, before I take the second part of that, is I'm going to now do... Do I do this one or the other one? A moment. One, two, three, four, and five. Three, six, seven, eight, and one would be nine. That'll work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this conversion, which is one honey and one other any good, it's a honey or a fish, but honey and one other good, and that allows me a single muster. And then when I do so, I flip it over, and at the end of the round, that would flip back over. I'll muster there, and now for one tax, 
I will take that there. Done. Apples. How you like them apples? So now he gets two builds. His two builds are somewhere he rules, but no structures. No, no, no. He rules and no structures. So then the order here is a stronghold. So his stronghold will go there. And now for his second build point is rule and no structure. He doesn't rule anywhere else that he doesn't have structures. So now don't rule and none of his structures. But if he doesn't rule, he has two points that costs. No, I, be I believe they still will. So let's see. Somewhere he doesn't rule and doesn't have structures. There or there, and he would build a stronghold. And the tiebreaker on that is in the uh, location order. So it's going to be another stronghold. This matters. This is going to be in Kiev. He has one. Chernigov. He's not there. Rostov, he's not there. Pereyaslav, he already has one. Smolensk, oh, I hate you so, so much. So Smolensk is the next one in location order, which means this goes here. He now has one, two, one, two. Oh, that was dirty. That was dirty for his last action. Oh. All right. Oh, that hurt. Okay. So that's it for the action phase. So we go into the final phase of the final round. And I believe the game ends a moment. You don't earn an income and you don't choose D cards. It's only advance on the claim tracks. All right. So here we go. How many regions do you rule? Let's count him. He rules one, two, three. Doesn't rule here because it's one to one. So one, two, three. Doesn't rule there. Three. He rules three, so he doesn't move up. I rule. No. One. Not now. Two. Three. So that ain't moving up. So that stays where it is. Builds in adjacent regions. He has one, two, three, four, five. That goes to there. That hurt. Okay. I'm looking at one, two, three, four. So that moves up to there. Goods on a boat. He has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on a boat. I have four, eight, nine on a boat. Pardon me. There we go. Because that's seven and that's nine. That'll do, pig. That'll do. All right. Uh, that's it. So now we go into final scoring. So we get points for, so I'm pretty sure I crushed, right? Let me double check on the scoring for end game here. Rebellion scoring. At the end of the game, you score points as normal. So let's count up our points, shall we? So, looking at mine, three, 
6, 11. I'm in first. That's 14. And then over here on our board, I did finish first. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I do not get that because I did not complete that. So that's 19 for yours truly. So let's throw that on there. The old scoreboard. There we go. So he scores. Uh, they don't score points for agendas or deeds. Okay. Normal scoring for the claim tracks. Okay. So on the claim board and the warfare track. So he's getting 3, 6, 11, 12 coins. One point for every three coins. So he's at 12. 13. Goods on the dock. One for every three goods on the dock. 14. We win. 1914. That was close, wasn't it? I mean, I realize I won by five points, don't get me wrong, but that was looking seriously in doubt the first three quarters of the game. I thought I was going to get housed. So it probably could have upped it difficulty level three or four. I think that would have been probably the happy spot on that. Um, all right, so let's talk about the game, shall we? Let, let's go over this. Uh, so let me just kind of break it apart, kind of like what I do on a podcast here, right? So artwork-wise, I'm not really super keen on the board. Um, it is a little bit heavy saturated on the camera. I see this, but not much. I'm not too keen on the artwork out here, but artwork's, you know, personal. So it's, it's crystal clear. I will say that. So graphic design-wise, thumbs up on that, okay? Uh, so I like that. We'll start there. Uh, the mechanisms. Um, I really like the auction mechanism. I love that. And what I mean by that is this stuff right here, this board, not only the order in which you do this, but uh, because you always activate an initiative order, meaning lowest to highest, but then it's a matter of the highest bid uh, takes the top spot. And I should also point out, this is the one, two side. That's the three and four side. So it's not impossible in multiplayer, right? Um, it, it, with more than two, etc. Uh, yeah, so that I think is the, is the, that's the thing that the game is built around was, is that me mechanism. And I think that is really, really good. You see it very similar, not exactly, but like Vasco da Gama comes to mind for that, uh, that bidding mechanism. Uh, it's not exact. So there is uh, there is some originality to it. And I, I think that's wonderful. I think that, that that's worth getting the game for that aspect alone. Uh, the everything else feels pretty basic and pretty, I mean, you saw it, right? It just feels like, uh, a well-worn road. Like it's, it's a familiar path is what I'm trying to say. Like nothing else about this, like trying to like almost like an area majority, you know, stuff when it comes to that, uh, the, the, the attacks couldn't be more simple, they just succeed and you draw whether or not you take casualties. I'm okay with that, I'm fine with that. I don't mind that level of randomness because you don't know things might happen, whatever. Uh, the board just to be able to, you know, filling up ships for income and stuff, I think that works. It's very simple. Like the mechanisms in this game outside of that auction mechanism, it's all very simple. But I do think that the auction, the auction mechanism is good enough that that carries the game. Now, I know there's a theme here. Uh, I mean, I love the artwork on the cards. Uh, on the cards themselves, I think this is wonderful. The board itself, eh, whatever. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, graphic design is crystal clear. It's a thumb up in my book. 
Uh, the theme here, I realize that the designer Stanislav, I'm going to assume he's from this part of the country or this part of the world. So it makes, you know, it's somewhere, something uh, close to him. It's an area control game in that regard. The theme, meh, right? Like it could have been anything is what I'm trying to say. Uh, does that help? Sure. I would like, I mean, honestly, the rule book, the rule book's pretty good. It's fine for the first edition. There's been updates, so definitely download the new version. Um, and there's a little bit of historical stuff, like this little box right here is historical. Uh, and then there are, there. let me find out. Oh, anytime you see these little gray boxes right here is little historical nuggets, which I appreciate. I like that stuff. Um, and there's, there's more stuff like here, whatever. Um, but again, the theme is the theme, right? It, it feels a bit pasted on, but overall, uh, and I'll show you guys the minis and everything. I mean, if, if plastic dolls are your thing, I, ha I think they look cool. Could they have been a large cube? Yes. So again, it's trying to bring the theme in and I can appreciate it. And I, I, I imagine these are probably worthy of painting, but whatever, as far as I'm concerned. But overall, how do I like the game? I like the game a lot because of that one mechanism. And I think that mechanism, it, like I said, carries the game well enough, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, and I think the solo game actually is really good. Now, there, let me show you guys this, and I think this will show up all right. So let me, yeah, let me go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. Let me bring it over. And this is the player aid that you can find on BGG, but the, the if this, then that type thing or whatever. So like, it's very basic, but once you get into the flow of things, it works really well. So here for mustering, okay. Do they occupy, but don't rule? If so, muster there. If not, go over to where they rule. Okay, so for marching, okay. Move to the target region regardless of distance, and that's based on the, uh, the order for the solo, right, on the card. And then leave at least one troop, never cede rule to you. Move from the closest region with troops, or uh, when distance tied, lowest location order, okay. And then depending on what their priority is, whether you don't occupy or whether, you, or whether they don't occupy it, then do this. And if it's either of these, then where they don't rule and you only do it in one region, okay? Uh, so let's see, um, Sharky Snack says, I own the game and share pretty much the, there we go, and the same thoughts. Uh, the auction is incredibly interesting in multiplayer, but it serves an already seen formula. Yeah, and I think it does that well enough that it, I, I, I would be happy. Uh, I'm glad I own this game. Um, yeah, I haven't played it multiplayer yet because COVID, but I mean, the only hidden information you have really are the cards, but it's enough to where there's enough information in this that's going to make important enough decisions that I don't think we could play this online unless there's like Tabletopia or, or Tabletop Simulator or whatever. But whether or not there are uh, casualties or not, I think that's a big enough thing to where that's going to have to wait until we can get together in person. Um, the, the resources are pretty nice. The insert is phenomenal. I never say that. The insert's awesome. So it's all little plastic containers and... Nice thing, they're at an angle, so they're easy to grab, and they slide. I mean, a lot of thought went into the uh, into the insert. I I did an unboxing for this just because I was like, oh, I got it in the mail. Let's bust that out. Comes with a uh, order in how to put it back together. Big fan. So if you're gonna do that, well done. Uh, I mentioned the in. Well, hell, you guys have been looking at this. The player pieces. Right? So these all, all these go into a plastic bag. 
Yeah, they go into a plastic bag and all of these go back on there and then that goes underneath. It fits, they, it locks in. You can see this right here. It locks in and the plastic bag goes in here. You pop it open and boom, player pieces. Holy cow, this is an amazing insert. Don't buy a game for an insert. Just saying, it's that extra little bit. Big fan. Um, Kirk's back. Kirk says, uh, there are three websites where you can play it online. Tabletop Simulator, Tabletopia, and Board Game Play, which is similar to Board Game Arena, fully automated. Well, there's that. So, that's an option. But yeah, uh, I, I, I think I could recommend this if you like that mechanism enough. And I do. I, I love auctions, though. I'm predisposed uh, to enjoy games that have really clever uh, auctions. The fact that it works solo and works two-player, I imagine, because basically that's what that is, is solo. It's two-player, but with one that's automated. Um, and I think it works marvelously well. How often do you find a game where an auction works well with two players? Not often. So yeah, good stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know it ran a little long, um, but I wasn't in a rush tonight. I don't think you guys were either. Where are you going? It's COVID, it's week, holiday weekend. You're here, so let's hang out. So that's the way I was thinking about it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did enjoy it, I certainly would appreciate your thumb down below. I'm messing up my computer, give me a second. <laughs> like I was saying, if you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumb down below. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Uh, if you stayed here for most of this playthrough and you don't subscribe, why not? Seriously. And you know what? I would appreciate the support over on uh, PledgeHC.com. If you think the content that you is entertaining helps save you money, helps you make informed decisions, go over to PledgeHC.com, support the show there. Uh, honestly, that should be the selling point on whether or not you want to sell, uh, support the show. On top of that, we have our Slack channel. Um, it's an amazing community, but honestly, that's above and beyond. But hey, whatever it takes, I'll take. I appreciate it, y'all. I will be back tomorrow, three-ish. Field Commander Rommel. Looking forward to that one. I'm Edward. You guys have a great rest of your evening. Social distance, wear your masks. Be smart. Be kind to one another. And I will see you guys in 16 and a half hours or so. All right. And thanks to Kirk and Peacekeeper Games uh, for sending us the copy. Appreciate it. If you guys want to see the expansion, tell Peacekeeper Games you want to see the expansion in the heavy cardboard. Uh, yeah. So maybe we can work with them on that. All right. Take care, everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night. I'm surprised I won that. Very surprised. Oh, wait a minute. I promised you guys to see the minis. That's on me. It's been that kind of day. Y'all want to see them? Let's see them. Let's check it out. Cool. I did this in the unboxing, but I don't expect everybody to have watched that. So, all right, so the evil Zviatopolk. Oops, yeah, that's all right. Use that as a platform right there. There we go. So, top down view. I mean, you throw a little, uh, you know, soap and water to get that all, you know, the, the whatever covering on there off. And I imagine you could, uh, and this is pretty stiff plastic, but there you go. You can straighten out is the base of that. There you go. Okay. So. Cool. All right. By the way, since I got everybody here. Um, I assume Sander is a part of this as well, huh? The, uh, the team there, or he's just a really big fan of the game. I'm not sure which. Let me get the names.
So I believe that's Boris. That is Boris. Okay. And shield looks pretty awesome. All right. Uh, where did I pull Boris from? He fits there. That'll work. Yeah, cool. All right. This one is... Setislav. There you go. All right. Oops. Didn't mean to drop you on your head. Maria is next with the bow. I like the rock outcropping that she's sitting on there. I like that you can actually see her face, you, can, you, you know? So here, in fact. So there's a pretty good amount of detail on that. It's pretty good. Okay, all right. Trying to make sure I put them back in the right spots. All right. So this next one is uh, Predslava. I like the details on the on the shields. On both of them so far. I like that. All right. Next, we have Yaroslav. All right, and next, or uh, uh, penultimate, I guess, is uh, is Agatha. Yeah, it looks cool, and I like. Uh, so here, let me let me let me go around. Now I'm gonna zoom in. I like on her, is it tunic, whatever her robe. I'm not quite sure what the term is, but. If you look at the detail on a robe right there, you see how it's the raised impressions and everything, right? And then on her face and the bird, if I, there we go. See the bird, you got the feathers on the back and yeah, I mean, I, like I said, for somebody who doesn't do anything with minis or anything, uh, you look at her hair, you, you got the braids on her hair. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think so, at least. I think they're pretty good. I mean, to my non-expert eyes, it looks like it. And then, of course, I mean, the one that everyone wants to see, clearly, is uh, Mr. Slav, the victor. And the Borzoi, right? And honestly, I kind of just like this one, even without the dog. Just uh, I think there's enough detail here on, on. Uh, I think it's a, on his outfit, and even the she, you know, his uh, shin guards. So, but let's face it, I, I want to see somebody paint uh, the Borzoi pretty good. There you go. All right. So, nobody, re nobody reminded me. I forgot. My bad. 
So there you go. Now I'm out of here. Like, subscribe, PledgeHC.com. See you tomorrow. For real this time, though, okay? <laughs> nice. Can't wait to get my Greyhound.